Good time crew. Good time crew if you're in the building. Good time crew in the building. Please report. No, you don't understand. Five, four, three, two. This is the rocket launch. Okay, that's the rocket launch, guys. I know, I was waiting for the rocket launch. All right, so look. Rocket launch to that subscribe button. We got, yeah, yeah, hit that subscribe button. We got a little <laughs> something, a little, little different again. We checking out yes. NASA astronauts telling. Is it chilling things about Reveal Earth? Reveal chilling things about Earth? Oh, maybe something so, they saw in space. I don't know. <laughs> Guys, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video. Join All that. your favorite crew on YouTube. Yes. All right, let's maybe check Maybe in life altogether. 1963. <laughs> Gracious, that's so long ago. Cooper would find a mystery that he kept secret for 40 years. He told nobody about his discovery in all that time, not even NASA. Instead, he worked covertly to decipher his discovery. Yet with his time running out, Cooper passed on his enigma to a friend. Finally, we know the shocking puzzle that Cooper saw as he gazed back at the Earth, and we're going to share it with you. So we won't keep you waiting any longer. The 1950s kicked off the space race between America and the Soviet Union. At the end of the decade, the Soviet Union was well in the lead. Thanks to successful missions such as the launch of the Sputnik projects, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration was created in America during 1958. With the Soviet Union racing ahead, NASA needed to quickly fire back with their own successful space missions. Especially after the Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first human in space in 1961. The contest between the two nations was set. Who would land on the moon first and place their flag? Who would take that first? One giant leap for mankind. After a number of NASA's successes, it led to the fateful mission for astronaut Gordon Cooper. Leroy Gordon Gordo Cooper Jr. was born in Shawnee, Oklahoma in 1927. Cooper was taught how to fly planes from a young age. Due to the Air Force not accepting new applicants at the time, Cooper enlisted in the Marines instead. However, Cooper would eventually find himself in the U.S. Air Force. During this time, Cooper would also get a degree in aerospace engineering. This led him to becoming a test pilot for the force. And due to these accomplishments, it didn't take long for the recently formed NASA to take note of Cooper. As such, they handpicked him to take part in a selection process in 1959. And he went to Washington. You know what? I, I just want to know. How do we get selected for something like that? I mean, I'm yeah. not in any kind of military, you know, Branch. entity. But look, man, I keep myself in good physical health. I exercise, <laughs> I run, I eat well. Am I ready? I mean, come on. Man, if Bezos can do it, I can do it. I was going to say. <laughs> At this uh, point. Uh, uh, yeah, because <laughs> now that we have him, because like, I guess before that, like, I mean, this dude has a degree in aerospace engineering. So it's like, yeah, he so, probably knows a lot more than. So he's more qualified it, it, up here. Yeah. <laughs> I guess he probably can process whatever information they do yeah. you know, in a more systematic way. But now Mr. Jeff Bezos. Mr. Amazon, he's more. Flipping around in space. He's okay. More, He's more gifted here with the down bill. If you got money, you can this, learn to do this, anything. With this, with this stuff right here. This stuff right here. This, this is a dollar. This Dang is a dollar. dollar. That's a dusty dollar. Dusty dollar. <laughs> All right, back to the video. Okay. Back to the video. There's a lot of dust. <laughs> Picked him to take part in a selection process in 1959, and he went to Washington at their request. Cooper and the other 109 applicants found themselves going through the rigors of astronaut training. And finally, the grueling astronaut training and examinations paid off. Seven men, including Cooper, were selected for this secret NASA mission. The mission would be known as the Mercury Project. The public were told that the purpose of this mission had two reasons. Firstly, to send a man into orbit and return back to Earth safely. And secondly, to see the effects of space on the human body. However, for Cooper in the Mercury Atlas 9 mission, he would have an additional objective, one that led to a big discovery. In 1963, Mercury Atlas 9 was prepping to launch. Leading up to the blastoff, Cooper had named his shuttle Faith 7. Apparently, the NASA higher-ups weren't too keen on the name. They were already imagining the newspaper headlines if the mission were to fail. On top of this, they weren't too keen on Cooper. His relaxed demeanor concerned his NASA bosses. However, fellow space trendsetters stuck up for the crewmate. The Faith 7 shuttle was small and could only fit one man under 5'11 within Whoa. its metallic shell. Luckily, Cooper fit... You guys see that? Oh, man, I'd freak out. Man, it's like putting yourself in a box. Like, what is going on? I don't know. Okay. I don't think Take I'll make it. How, how tall did they say? 5'7"? 5'11"? 5'11"? Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't make it. I'm almost 6'2". I would never... I'd be like... 
all right, God, let's go to space. And then as yeah. soon as something happened, I'm mm, mm, rocking like, my head around. I can't get out. Oh, my gosh. I can't get out. Oh. You literally can't get out. Oh, my gosh. See, that's why we were so I would have to open the door. It would be over. I'd be like, I can't do it. Space, oh. I'm here. <laughs> Yeah, no. It'll right. be over. Oh my goodness, that's that's scary, man. Uh, yeah. Shout out to these guys for really going through this stuff. Right. It was small and could only fit one man under five foot eleven within its metallic shell. Luckily, Cooper fit this requirement. For this mission, NASA was going to send one man into space for an extended period of time. Cooper was instructed to observe any effects zero gravity would have on the human body. Then, after a period of time, he would return to Earth safely. And keep in mind, the public are only aware of these two tasks at the time. A lot of the mission objectives were classified, and it seems Cooper was instructed to do another task up in the dark void of space. He was told to take a lot of photos of Earth. He took over 5,000 pictures, but it wasn't just to shoot some pretty pictures. There was another objective involved in taking all of these space snaps. In particular, it centered around the Soviet Union juggernaut. Remember, during this time, the Cold War was underway between the USA and the Soviet Union. A lot of distrust between the two nations festered. Up on the ship, Cooper's camera had an extra feature when compared to the average camera. It was able to register the magnetic field around the Earth. In particular, it could register magnetic aberrations across the Earth's surface. This allowed Cooper to search for hidden Soviet nuclear bases and submarines, which is something that frightened the US government. Cooper would then mark on a map where these potential locations were off the United States coasts. This was invaluable information for the U.S. defense at the time. As Cooper was searching for these destructive areas, he found something else. Something that didn't make sense. He saw these magnetic anomalies through the camera. However, they weren't the correct size or shape to be nuclear holding facilities. Many were in the shallow waters around the Caribbean, which would rule out both nuclear bases and submarines. This riddle grabbed hold of the space adventurer. He had to find out what these bizarre marks were. Cooper charted on another map all of the anomaly locations. Near the end of the mission, disaster struck. The Faith 7 was hit by many technical issues. The automatic gyroscope and control system no longer had any power. The shuttles were designed to automatically take care of entry back into Earth's orbit. Previously, Air Force legend Chuck Yeager described the Mercury astronauts as, quote, spam in a can, end quote. This was due to the fully automatic control on the shuttles. Back on the Faith 7, Cooper had more big problems. On top of the automatic system failing, the temperature in the shuttle and carbon dioxide levels were both rising rapidly. Cooper wasn't left with any choices. He knew he had to fly the shuttle manually back to Earth. He drew lines on the windows of the shuttle in order to use the star constellations as a guide for his location. Years of learning to fly were absolutely paying off in his time of need. He used his wristwatch to time himself. He also stared out the window to watch his altitude. Amazingly, Cooper was able to land the shuttle exactly where it was meant to go. It splashed down right next to the aircraft carrier that was in the ocean to collect the heroic astronaut. He suffered no bad injuries from this miraculous landing. Altogether, the Mercury Atlas 9 mission kept Cooper amongst the stars for a little over 34 hours. This would set a record for the longest time someone had been in space. During his time in orbit, Cooper had completed 22 revolutions around the Earth. Cooper was also in the last single manned space mission. Later on, Cooper would go on to record many outstanding achievements in humanity's venture to the stars. Yet even with all that success, those anomalies played on Cooper's mind. And for reasons unknown, he never told NASA or any other agencies about his bizarre findings. Instead, he had to find out what they were himself. He kept his odd discovery to himself for 40 years. So Cooper set off on a self-provided mission. During his spare time, he would research and try to figure out what the points of interest are. However, due to his NASA commitments until 1970 and other interests, Cooper struggled to find any free time. Yet, he still managed to put pieces of the galactic puzzle together. As he investigated, he realized that many of these oddities were scattered through old Spanish ship trade routes. Hmm. This sparked an idea within Cooper's mind. He wondered if these blips could be related to shipwrecks. So he dug further into the research rabbit hole. He looked up known ships that had sunk in those areas. From what he found, the research seemed to suggest that he was right. He even found out what items certain ships were carrying before they fell to the ocean floor. But eventually, time and life caught up with Cooper. Cooper would later be diagnosed with Parkinson's. This disease progressively affects the nervous system. Over time, the sufferer will experience muscle tremors and have difficulty moving. Legendary boxer Muhammad Ali was another well-known figure to suffer with this debilitating disease. 
Due to the illness, Cooper was unable to continue his beloved research. In 2004, he made the difficult decision to pass on this task to a close friend. That person... You know, that is really amazing. I just wanted to, to pause there real quick and we'll get right back to it. But I just want to say that's so amazing to be mm -hmm. able to like see that and go and look for it afterwards and then us hear the story later on. Yes. It's like, dude, this is blowing my mind right now. I can't yeah. believe that he was able to go back and try to like dig into there and actually find and some stuff. Fine, yeah. Honestly, he was right by not saying anything though. Because if he would have said something, they would have tried to turn it into a whole and they, mission yeah. and it would have been a whole thing. And they he wouldn't have been it. able to, yeah, he wouldn't have been able to see for himself without too much oversight. But yeah, so that, that's cool. That's cool, awesome. This for is, sure. This is a cool thing. The decision to pass on this task to a close friend. That person was Daryl Miklos. Cooper handed over every piece of paper and all of the notes that he had gathered over the years. He asked Miklos to figure out this conundrum that had been hounding him for 40 years. Miklos promised his dear friend that he would. The following day, with the mission of delegation complete, Cooper passed away peacefully. Cooper originally met Daryl Miklos on the TV talk show, The Murph Griffin Show. Cooper was a guest on the program alongside Daryl's father, Roger Miklos. Roger was a treasure hunter that made some major discoveries over the years, some worth hundreds of millions of dollars. However, he was also accused of bribing officials for permits. Almost as if there's a theme here. During the Merv Griffin show, Roger would introduce his son to Cooper. Daryl was awestruck to meet the astronaut in the flesh. The two would go on to become good friends, so much so that Daryl Miklos and Cooper would share an office for many years. In the files that Miklos had inherited, he saw that Cooper had marked over 150 locations for possible shipwrecks. However, some of the marked locations were labeled as, quote, unknown. And that's something we're going to get into here in a moment. Armed with this mission, Miklos felt the burning desire to fulfill his mentor's request. Miklos has been involved in the historical shipwreck recovery business for over 45 years. He had a lot of resources and experience under his belt for this mammoth task. However, Miklos would need financing for these expeditions. All of that equipment is rather expensive. And this is where the Discovery Channel comes in. Immediately, Discovery agreed to film Miklos' expedition for a documentary series. The show was titled Cooper's Treasure. Considering the history of the research, it sounds like a fitting tribute to the man responsible for this treasure hunt. Miklos describes the research as potentially being worth billions of dollars in gold and other valuable items. On top of the riches, there could be some invaluable historical knowledge from finding these broken vessels, which up until this point were lost to the ocean's hold. Soon the team began their enormous task. They chose one of the marked coordinates on Cooper's map, and when they arrived, they discovered pieces of a sunken ship. The information from all of Cooper's notes turned out to be accurate in some capacity. Miklos and his crew made a number of great discoveries in this journey. While they have found pieces of gold, they also found items of another nature. In one instance, they found a collection of cannons from the 1700s lying together on the seabed. The cannons are thought to have either been dumped by the ship in one go to lighten the extraterrestrial spaceship in the Bermuda Triangle. The Bermuda Triangle already has a conspiracy-ridden lineage before this potential find. Miklos claims that he has never seen anything like this before. This object has obtrusions that are 15,300 feet long coming from its sides. What's interesting is the area where they discovered this vessel was the location that Cooper had labeled unknown. Cooper himself was a big believer in the existence of alien life, something which NASA distanced themselves from when he spoke in a public forum. Cooper made a lot of claims about the U.S. government's interactions with life beyond the Earth. However, Miklos believes his mentor's allegations about the presence of extraterrestrial life. Perhaps this unidentified submerged object, or USO, discovery could help shape Cooper's claims. Or maybe it won't. That is crazy. Are you hearing what they're saying? They were deep diving in there and found things that look like extraterrestrial life. That is insane. I just like weird stuff like that, being able Me to too. uncover that. Because, I mean, obviously, if it's that old made out of that kind of metal, it's not man-made. Yeah. Like, because, I mean, if the technology was man-made then, where did the time go right. to why it's just being invented again? You know what I yeah. mean? So At least not modern man-made. Right, right. Because, yeah, we, we know there's differences between right. the, the different periods of life. This is so cool. That's real life. Perhaps this unidentified submerged object, or USO, discovery could help shape Cooper's claims. Or maybe it won't. We'll just have to wait and find out. Maybe aliens already live among us. 
Either way, Cooper's anomaly map has led to some great historical finds. Hopefully, it'll lead to many more. And that's it. Do you think the map will lead to any more discoveries? If so, what do you think the next big find will be? We're open for... I think the map will lead to more discoveries if it's kept in the right hands. That's because true. if it goes in the wrong hands, they're going to be like, well, you're not doing this anymore. Get it out of here. Yeah, I'm not looking for burn this. Burn all the documents. Yep. Burn everything that you have. Yeah, because that's why I said he was smart for not saying anything when he saw it initially. Yeah, so he could go look for it. Yeah, at least he was able to get the knowledge and pass it down. But then, I mean, how crazy is that? To see something and have all the resources to go and find it. Yeah. Like if I saw something like that, I wouldn't. I think I just said that the other day. Mm -hmm. you gotta have the resources. Like, how are we gonna even? You know, that's just cool to me. So the thing is, where's the follow-up though? Right. Where's the rest of? What did they find when they pulled out or they cut it off and yeah. took uh, dusted off the, all the the coral and stuff? Or like did that. they leave it there? Like yeah, all the whatever that is, moss, sea yeah. moss. All that stuff they got on it, I think sure, surely they had moved that. You would think, right? So then here's the question too, because I know that they turned this into a show, the Discovery Channel, like Cooper's Treasure or whatever. So does that show explain what happened next? Probably not. It probably cuts nah. off and it never goes any further. Yeah. I was All the rest say. of that stuff has been scrapped and bam, right into the garbage. Yeah. Because they don't want to prove that, oh yeah, of course, extraterrestrial, yeah, this is Here very is. clear. Like, Even no. though that whole thing of CIA doing documents came out, you guys probably saw that. Yeah, it's not a secret. It's not a secret. We'll go over that. We'll, we'll look at a video right. that has that in it, and that'll be real fun. Or All right. Like, leave us some recommendations, too. What else should we watch that's, like, really, you know, just interesting? Things we can learn. Good time, crew. Do it in the comments. We'll see you yep. next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe.